Hello everyone, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you're me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Ad Astra. So the last place we left off, we were just in the garden with Alexios, and we had just found out that the spot of the insects on Ad Astra are quite a bit bigger than their earthly counterparts. But anyway, guys, uh, let's not think about that. Let's just jump right back in. <laughs> All right. Anyway, please sit back and let me entertain you for the next 20 minutes, and let's go. Alarm Chan, you're up. Alarm Chan, don't fail me now. Okay, let's go. Okay. <clears throat> Ooh, excuse me, okay. <laughs> well, we'll find out soon enough after the trials. Alex's mood suddenly brightens. But anyway, I've really been enjoying our time together today. Like I said, it's so nice to be able to talk to someone who isn't my superior. I hope we can do this often while you're here. Yeah, of course. Wonderful. Alex raises a paw to look up at the sun, at Vita. We should keep working. It's starting to get too hot out here. For the next several hours, we work around the garden before finally moving inside to walk around the walk around the palace a bit. He points to the doors for things like the throne room and the communal bath, but we never go inside, and he tells me I should only do so when I'm with Amicus. Eventually, we move back to the dining room where Alexius suggests we watch the screens until our masters arrive. Masters return. He says it will better acquaint me with wolvish culture. It takes me a moment to realize that I'm watching a short that I'm watching a sort of film starring wolves similar to Amicus. They're acting out scenarios about traveling into space and finding other more sapiens. The sapient species they find are wolves and masks. I guess they don't really have CGI because every effect looks practical. It's long, boring, and the acting is overly exaggerated, like they're in a silent film. Finally, after what seems like a good three hours, Alex tells me that Amicus will be returning soon and that I might want to tidy up his room before he gets back. I'm relieved to, I'm relieved to cut the film short, and Alex and I part ways to go to our respective rooms. Oop. Nope. I'm surprised to see that it's already dark outside. Even with the shorter day, I guess mindlessly watching wolves over overacting to other wolves in masks took up more time than I thought. On my way through the marble halls, I pass every now and then, I pause every now and then to look at large murals on the walls depicting everything from wolves swimming to wolves swinging swords at other canines. In the great hall is the largest mural, and it depicts five wolves. The feature, their features are flat and like any sort of perspective, making the muzzles look a bit askew. Two larger wolves loom over the other three. One is white with a feminine shape, while the larger of the two is black and holding his paw to his chest. Around his head is a wreath. Of the uh, three smaller wolves, one is also clearly feminine, while another is white. I wonder if this might be Cassius in Virginia, which would leave the remaining wolf in the middle to be Amicus. He's skinnier, and I wonder if this might have been him as a child or a teenager. A glowing wreath floats above his head. <clears throat> a jump as someone clears their throat very loudly next to me. I turn around and find myself staring at Kato, the advisor. He looks me up and down for a moment. At least, I think he does. More silence. I open my mouth to respond, then remember that what Amicus told me. I let my eyes unfocus and my mouth droop open a bit. Uh... Kato's ears switch at the sound I make, then clears his throat again. <clears throat> Hello! Killian, was it? How are you enjoying your first day in the palace? I wonder if I should keep droning, or if I should at least answer the question. I am technically a sapient, so I suppose it's okay if I if I sort of understand. Uh, good. The left side of Kato's scarred face twitches as he waits for more, but I don't give him anything. Good, good. I trust that Alexio showed you around the palace. It's a bit of a stifling life behind these walls, but hopefully with time we will be able to take you out to the city. I cross my eyes a little. Oh, uh, I like it. Heh, <laughs> yes. So, where are you from again exactly? There's something behind this wolf's words. Something there that's a little more than innocent curiosity. Uh, Big Rock Planet by Star. Kato waits, and again, I don't see anything more. Do you have a name for the planet? Yeah, Big Rock Planet. Kato massages the left side of his forehead, looking a little bit annoyed. Big Rock Planet? With water. Kato stares. So, Big Rock Planet with water. I nod dumbly. Kato sighs loudly and stalks off, not even bothering in the conversation. <laughs> Wonderful, now I have a headache. And with that, he disappears around the corner. I decide that I did an okay job, as Kato seems to think that I am a massive idiot. I make my way quickly to Amicus's room, glad to not run into anyone else. That is probably going to fall apart if he sees you interacting with anyone else, even, like, slightly more competently than what you just gave him. <laughs> Yeah. I make my way to the. I make my way quickly to Amicus's room. Glad to not run to anyone else. There isn't much to do. Amicus's room is spotless, so after meandering around and smoothing the bed covers over, I choose to sit down on the sofa and wait. 
Despite the fact that I've only been up for what's probably been 10 hours, I'm exhausted. Maybe I won't have any trouble adjusting to the shorter days. As I start to doze off, there's a sudden clattering sound toward the door. I jump and see Amicus come in, wheeling in a tray with several plates on top of it. On several plates on top of it, heaped high with food. He grins at me, and I get a feeling of relief. I get a feeling of relief at seeing him. Hello. Sorry. I suppose Alex didn't tell you that they set the outside door on the fifteenth hour. He treats you well. Yeah, he was nice. Amicus wheels the cart up to the sofa, then flops back onto it next to me, making the whole thing shake. Nah. Ugh, what a long day. Are you okay? Amicus opens one eye. Barely. I had to go over maths today, and my head feels my head feels as if it's going to explode. Didn't help that Balbus kept cracking me over the head with his stick when I answered wrong. Wow, that sounds harsh. No worry, it was nothing compared to the one you gave me. Amicus smirks, and I can't help but smile back at his teasing. He seems to have some more comfortable. He seems to have become more comfortable around me with how relaxed he is. I am sorry about that. Don't be, and stop apologizing for it. Now, let's wash and eat. My stomach's felt hollow since breakfast. We both go to the restroom to rinse our paws, hands in the sink before heaping our plates with food. It's more of the same with bread and meat and olives, but there's also a good amount of other vegetables and fruit that I have a hard time identifying. Emika shows me how to combine the fruit and cheese onto the bread, and I find myself really starting to like the smelly bread. As long as I ignore the smell. Compared to breakfast, Amicus really wolfs down a lot of food. He probably ends up eating about three times as much as me. All the while, he tells me about his scary instructor and how he punishes him way more than Cassius. Well, does he usually get the answers right? Well, yeah, but he should help me understand rather than smack my ears. That doesn't help anything unless he has the information in his stick and is bashing it into my brain somehow. Don't worry, I hate math too. Well, I'm better than other things like literature and history. Ha! Huh, Cassius is hopeless at remembering battles. Amicus flexes a bicep. And he could forget about wrestling. He could never beat me in a fight. Yeah, I wouldn't think so. So yes, he can have all the maths he wants. The trials don't involve that anyway. What are these trials you guys keep talking about? Amicus takes a big gulp of wine, gasping when he finally pulls the goblet away from his face. What Cato is considering using... What Cato is considering using to decide the next emperor. Essentially three trials. Music and dance, rhetoric, and finally combat. And whoever wins those becomes Emperor? Well, whoever wins two out of three. Combat is last, so that So that if one of us so that if one of us wins, the first two it won't come to that. I'm really just hoping that Cato chooses me in the next few days now that he's now that he's seen you. But if the trials do happen, you have nothing to worry about. Amicus grins at me confidently. I don't I'm better than Cassius in at least two of those things, perhaps even in music and dance. You know, I believe you, but one thing I know about you is how, um, overly confident you are when it comes to certain things. Why do you say that? Her entire experience on the ship, maybe? That's different. I was doing something I didn't really understand. I didn't, uh, I understand my studies, aside from maths. Amicus leans back, finally, one paw on his stomach. Anyway, how was your day? Did Alex show you around? Amicus starts to grab the remaining food to set aside on its own plate. Yeah, I've realized that there isn't much to do. Ah, uh, yeah, it was a bit of a bad day. I have tomorrow off from studies, though, so we can do something entertaining. Like what? Oh, I don't know. Go swimming, go to the baths, talk, you name it. Maybe eventually we can go to the city, too. The city outside? Well, everything's outside. Good music. I mean, uh, the one that I can see across the lake. Yes, that one, at Astra City, the capital of our empire. Oh, isn't it kind of small for that? I mean, it looks really nice, but it kind of looks just like an average-sized city. Amicus frowns. I think it's quite large. How big are cities on Earth? I shrug. I don't know, pretty big. Uh, millions of people? Amicus raises an eyebrow. Millions? Uh, yeah. I wonder if the lingua is translating everything correctly. Why? How big is that Astra? The city, just over 5 million. The wolf population is 80 million. Oh, how many humans are there? Like, seven billion. Amicus jokes. What? Is that a lot? That's preposterous. Do you not have a population control measures put in place? Well, not in most places. Amicus shakes his head. Well, you are parentless, so I guess it makes, your, it makes sense your species might be so misguided. Amicus seems to try very hard to choose the last word, even though he's still being very condescending. He seems to notice my annoyance, though. Well, is your species doing well? Is your planet able to sustain such a population? 
sort of. I guess there are problems. Amicus strokes his chin. Well, I suppose when I become Emperor, I could ask the parent about your species. The whole thing is a real mystery, but it's clear that we must have overlooked your Emperor people somehow. He smiles at me. Maybe we could even bring you into our fold again. Whoa, hang on a second. Images of Roman spaceships descending from the heavens to enslave the human race all because of me flashed through my mind. You know, Alex told me about what you do to the other sapiens. It doesn't... It doesn't sound like something humans would want to be a part of. What did he tell you? The whole enslavement thing? Enslavement? What you do to your children. Well, that's a harsh word for it. No, it's the right word. Humans have done the whole indentured servant thing back on Earth, and it never turned out well for the servant. Amicus's ears go down a bit. And as misguided as humans might be, we've at least abolished slavery. I note, Am I notice Amicus's ears turning red. Maybe he never expected to be lectured on ethics by a human. I, well, I, I do mean to change things a bit when I become emperor. A bit. I mean, things just can't be changed all at once. It has to be gradual. Hmm. Amicus flicks his tail in annoyance at me. That's the thing about human culture all around the world and throughout history. is like, shit has to be done, like, either, like, really gradually or just crazy just all at once, super fast. It's like either one or the other. It has to, it has to it's like never on time. Like, change can't happen. It, like, it's like, let me put it like this. Change can't happen when it needs to happen. Change is either going to happen at an insanely fast pace and no one's going to be ready for it, or change is going to happen after, like, thousands of people have died. That seems to be how change ta change happens in human history. It's either, like, it's going to happen all at once, or we're just going to wait for thousands upon thousands of people to die from a problem before we actually decide to do anything about it. Yeah, humans are weird. <laughs> Amicus flicks his tail in annoyance at me. Listen, I agree with you. We've been trying to change the way we've treated our children for generations. My grandfather and father both worked towards this. Well, well, that's messed up and definitely wrong. I think the intelligence thing might be even worse. What intelligence thing? The grimace on Amicus's face tells me that he might already know the answer. The way you stunted intelligence in the children you uplifted. Amicus is silent for a moment. I can tell that all of this is making him very uncomfortable. I have to ask myself again how I got to this point, sitting on a sofa debating ethics with a prospective Emperor Wolf. He finally folds his arms and huffs. Again, I agree with you on all this. I don't like the way we've treated our children. In the end, I truly feel that becoming a more compassionate United Empire would lead to a better outcome for everyone. It's going to take small steps, but understand that it's something I mean to fix. And stop saying you like I did it. I was born into this. I've come to realize how much of an open book Amicus is as a person, so I don't doubt his words. Well, as long as Cassius doesn't become Emperor, Amicus snorts. Not a chance. Well, if he does, it sounds like he's going to reverse all that. And I'm saying there's no chance of it. Wait, how much has Alex been telling you? It was a short conversation. I asked him about the Empire. I didn't, but I don't want to get Alex in trouble in case he, w in case he wasn't just supposed to tell me. Cassie seems like a terrible person, by the way, and I'm not just talking about his personality. He wants to keep people enslaved. It's complicated. He's just very traditional, but again, there's no chance. I sigh at the wolf's overconfidence, but he does know his brother far better than I do. See, it seems that people uh, hide behind their shitty behavior. It seems like people hide behind tradition as a means of excusing their shitty behavior. Like, bro, come on. Like, We, we just know you just want to fucking remain on top of the pile and just look down at people. Like, come on. D d you just admit it. <laughs> uh, if he admits that, it would give the game away. Well, I'm at least glad that I'm behind the right wolf and getting myself home. The right wolf? Yeah, I can imagine being under your brother. Amicus glances at the plate he's been building with food. Speaking of, I'm gonna bring this to Alex in the garden. Did you want to accompany me? I run a hand through my hair, feeling the griminess from two days of no shower. Actually, can I use the shower while you're gone? I feel kind of gross. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, just step in and it starts up. There's a screen on the wall that controls temperature. It has a color spectrum that you can drag a finger across. I'll figure it out. Wait, do you just step into the shower and it just starts pelting you with, like, warm or scald- with, like, with, like, scalding hot water or freezing cold water? I'm genuinely curious. Ah, oh, right. Well, I should be back by the time you're finished. And with that, Amicus balances his plate of food in his paws as he, str as he strides out the room, leaving me to go into the bathroom. 
I quickly use the toilet again, suddenly glad that I don't have to use a public toilet like the ones I've been I've seen drawings of in my Roman history books. A shower is easy enough to understand, and the water is immediately warm and pleasant. Oh, okay. So I don't have to bother with the temperature. There's several glass bottles of soap, so I choose the one that smells the best and give myself a quick wash. When I'm done, I grab a towel off the wall and try and dry off before wrapping it around my waist. I think about putting my clothes back on, but the idea of stepping back into that underwater and into that underwear has me hesitating. Instead, I open the door and am greeted by the sight of Amicus sitting on the edge of the bed, looking off to the side, a paw in his lap holding a brush. His head snaps in my direction before he immediately averts his eyes. Heh. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to see you. I, I thought you'd be dressed. Hey, it's fine, I got the towel on. Slowly, Amicus turns his gaze to me, his eyes drifting down my torso before immediately snapping back up again. Oh, uh, I thought you hated any sort of nudity. Not really, just the genitals. Even then, I don't hate it, it's just more private. Ah. Amicus seems to be staring at me, and I start to feel a little self-conscious. Is everything okay? Amicus looks away again. Sorry, I'm, I'm just not used to seeing you like that. I've only seen humans with clothing. I just sort of imagined you'd always be that way. Well, my clothes are dirty, so I was going to ask you about maybe getting some clean ones? A at least until you can get me that tailor. Oh, of course. Come. Come, send us some robes from storage. Children's robes, please. Yes, Amicus. Thanks. Of course. Of course. I stand there awkwardly for another few seconds until Amicus seems to snap back to reality again. Alright, there we go. He holds up the brush. Anyway, I thought maybe you'd like to be groomed too. I feel it's only fair after what you did for me. Oh, well, it's only on my head. All the easier for me, then. Amicus grins. Well, uh, uh, all right. I walk over to the bed and sit with my back to the wolf. Amicus adjusts his seating to face me more directly, then starts to run the brush gently through my hair. We sit in silence for a bit, and I start to enjoy the feeling of the brushing, especially the way the firm bristles run across my scalp, giving me shivers up and down my neck. Sorry for talking so much earlier. I'm... I'm not used to being able to talk to someone. The palace is a bit lonely, so having a friendly conversation with someone other than the calm is a bit of a novelty. Amicus chuckles. That was probably why I was having so much trouble focusing on my studies today. I was so excited to come back home and speak with you. Hearing that makes me feel a little bad for the wolf. I suppose being the prospective emperor doesn't allow you to have many friends, and being in such an empty palace definitely seems lonesome. I guess this is why Alex told me basically the same thing. You're fine, and I didn't mean to be too harsh earlier. I, I just... I know it's not your fault. No, I think we're all on the same page on that one. All the more reason to uh, unite against Cassius, eh? Oh! As if he'd forgotten something, Amicus's other paw comes around my side, and on his palm I see two purple grapes. I've managed to snatch a few of those off of Alexios's earring. He wasn't too happy about that. Ha! <laughs> one one? Seriously? I take one. I take one. More out of being nice to Amicus than anything, but when I, when I bite into it, I can't help but notice just how juicy and sweet it is. Amicus talks to me with a grape in his mouth. Mmm, mmm. I don't know why, but his grape earrings always taste the best. His grape earring? <laughs> By the way, if you don't mind, I invited Alex to our outing tomorrow. Cassius is going to be away to do some speeches and is leaving Alex behind for once. Uh, of course not. We get, along, we get along really well. I lean my head back, allowing the wolf to continue the brushing. Your fur. Hair, you call it. It's not like a wolf's fur, but it's rather nice. I smile. Thank you, Amicus. If you'd like, I can do this for you every day. I feel that's fair. I have to admit that I really like this, so I accept. Yeah, sure. It feels really nice. I hear some thumping sounds, and I imagine it's Amicus's tail wagging against the bed. So, washing you, brushing you, and making you smell nice are all my duties? Well, that and accompanying me to two important meetings and public outings, but all you do during those is stand there and look civilized. Yeah, that's what you all keep telling me. This all seems pretty easy. Though, there is one thing you can do for me before I go to bed. What? Well, a, a full body massage. I look over my shoulder at him. Or we can just stick with the other duties. I laugh and Amicus's ears come back up. He continues to brush for a while longer before finally setting it aside. There, looks much better now. I gently run a hand over my hair, and I have to agree that it feels softer than it's ever felt before. But anyway, Killian, I'm looking forward to the I'm looking forward to these months ahead with you, even though we started off a bit poorly. I look back at the wolf at his earnest but tentative smile. He's definitely a man of contradictions. Rash half the time, 
but considerate most of the time. I'm not sure what to make of him, but at this point, I feel like I can at least trust him. And that's saying a lot after what he put me through. A smile back. Yeah, m me too. Hmm. Oh dear. Oh? What do we got? The next day, Amicus wakes, wakes me up by gently shaking my shoulder. Hey! Hey, Gillian, wake up! <laughs> I roll over on my sofa, groggily pulling the blanket up around me as I shiver. Ugh, it's so cold in here. Oh! Alright, guys, I'm, guys and gals, I'm gonna pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, leave a super thanks if you can, it always helps. Oh, I'm gonna tell you guys right now. Oh, actually, you know what? We'll wait to the next video. Wait to the next video. I've got some cool news. I'll tell you guys in the next video. Love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!